Hello everyone and welcome back. From the last couple of sessions, we have been observing the hard disk drives. Continuing that trick, today we will learn about two more features of the hard disk drives. Those are the recording density and the rotational speed. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. During the session, Secondary memory hard disk drives, we learned that every surface of the magnetic disks or platters are divided into tracks. Now the tracks are actually concentric circles and the radius of the innermost track is way smaller than the radius of the outermost track. Then again, the tracks are further subdivided into sectors and the number of sectors in each track is same in case of all the tracks. So the question remains, how can the size of the inner sector and the sector of the outer track be the same? To be precise, how can all the sectors be of the same size? Well, this happens due to the phenomenon called recording density. Recording density for the smaller tracks are higher than the recording density of the larger tracks. In simpler terms, Data bytes are written close to each other in smaller tracks, whereas data bytes are written further from one another in case of larger tracks. Using this feature, the track capacity is maintained throughout the tracks. Now, maximum recording density can be calculated if we divide the bytes per track, that is the track capacity, by the circumference of the innermost track, because Recording density happens to be the highest in case of the innermost track. Let's now solve a small numerical problem to understand this point more lucidly. Observe this question. Consider a hard disk drive with the following specifications. First, 1024 sectors per track. That is, every track in the surface has 1024 sectors in them. Next, the diameter of the innermost track is 28 centimeters. We have to find out the maximum recording density based on the available information. So let's solve it. Now the track capacity can be calculated if with the number of sectors per track we multiply the bytes per sector, that is the sector size. Now the number of sectors per track is 1024. Nonetheless, the bytes per sector, that is the sector size, has not been provided in the question. Well, no worries. We know that generally the sector size is 512 bytes. We already learned about this in the session secondary memory, the hard disk drives. So, 1024 is 2 raised to the power 10 and 512 is 2 raised to the power 9. Now, 2 raised to the power 10 bytes is actually 1 kilobytes and 2 raised to the power 9 is 512. So the track capacity is 512 kilobytes. Now let's calculate the circumference of the innermost track. We know that the circumference of any circle is 2 pi r or pi d, where d stands for the diameter. We also know that the value of pi is close to 22 by 7. And D here is mentioned as 28 centimeters. Now 7 fours are 28 and 4 into 22 is 88. Hence, circumference of the innermost track is 88 centimeters. Now we have all the data to calculate the maximum recording density. All we have to do is divide the track capacity, that is 512, by the circumference, that is 88. And the unit of the maximum recording density will be kilobytes per centimeter, which is approximately 5.82 kilobytes per centimeter. So the maximum recording density for this particular hard disk drive is 5.82 kilobytes per centimeter. Now let's move on to the next phase. The magnetic disks of the hard disk drives rotate at high speeds. Based on the rotational speed, these are classified into three different categories. First category has the speed of 5400 RPM, that is rotations per minute. That means, in a minute, 
These platters will rotate 5400 times. These are mainly used in laptop computers. Next one is the 7200 RPM category. These are typically used in desktop workstations. Finally, there is the next one, that is the hard disks of 10,000 RPM, which were popular among the higher-end hard drives. However, the emergence of solid-state drives or SSDs reduced the popularity of these. Now, the hard disk drives are interfaced with the motherboard using the serial ATA or SATA cables through these SATA modules. The ATA in SATA stands for Advanced Technology Attachment. These were introduced in the year 2000, replacing the old parallel ATA interface. Alright people, that will be all for this session. I hope the concepts of recording density and the rotational speed are now clear to you. In the next session, we will solve some more numerical problems pertaining to these concepts. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.